Hi, I'm Bill Sagres, and in this episode, we're going to do a quick start guide for sports photography. Quick start guide for sports photography. Um, not going into a lot of detail, I'm just going to try to tell you how to set your camera up and then a couple of quick considerations regarding your lens selection. So the, the, the first consideration is going to be that uh, in most occasions with sports photography, you're trying to you're trying to, to freeze the action. You're trying to freeze the action as the runners run, as the basketball players play, whatever's going on, you're gonna to wanna to try to freeze that action. In order to do that, you're gonna need a high shutter speed. So you want to, to prioritize shutter speed and let your shutter speed selection remain the, the constant and let everything else change around that. If you're a beginner to, the, to photography and, and you're going out and this is like, you know, you're new to, to, to photography, put your ISO on automatic, put your shutter, your camera on shutter priority, and then run your shutter speed up as high as, as, as you can with, and still get uh, um, a, a picture that is, that is possible with your, with your camera. Um, that might mean on an indoor event that you're at 800 or 1000, or it might mean an, uh, 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 that you're at 500. If your shutter speed goes below 500 and you're trying to shoot sports, you're really counting on getting lucky. Uh, you're, that some of the shots will be okay and a lot of the shots will be blurry. If you can get your shutter speed above 1000, you're going to be a lot better off. Now if you're more experienced and you want to take a little more control, the way you're going to get that shutter speed up is you're going to set your ISO up to a, a, a place on your camera that, that offers a good quality picture but as high as you can go without introducing uh, ISO noise. Once you've set your ISO, then that's gonna determine you're gonna be able to figure out what your shutter speed is. On the Canon EOS models, if there's not enough light when you have it on the TV mode, the, uh, aperture, the aperture will flash. And if, and if it's just a little bit off, you'll probably be okay. But if you're, you know, obviously if you're, if you're drastically underexposed, then the pictures will be no good. So you can take a picture and look at it and see, see how it comes out. So you're prioritizing shutter speed. And in order to do that, you want a high ISO, as high as your camera can sustain and still give quality pictures. Um, if you're in outdoor sports uh, in the daytime, obviously getting your shutter speed up into the thousands is easy but depending on your, your venue, on indoor sports, you're, you're gonna have to, to learn uh, your settings. In the gym where I usually do pictures, I can set my ISO on 12800. I know that this camera will handle that and still give a quality picture. And I can run my uh, shutter speed at 1000 and get, uh, get good pictures that way. So I, I know that about my camera and my gym situation. We have another gym situation, a swimming pool and a, and a field house. Um, I can't go all the way to 1000, it'll be too dark. So I need to run that down to 800 or even uh, 500. Or I can take my, shutter, my ISO up another notch. All right, so that is the, uh, the, the ISO, the, the exposure settings. You wanna prioritize shutter speed. Focus, you wanna wanna put it on the, 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 the type of focus that your camera has that will follow the action and focus and on the EOS cameras. That is the, uh, I, the AI servo mode. It will focus and then it will change focus as the object is moving. Burst mode versus one picture at a time, that's gonna depend on your, your, your preference, your style of shooting. Um, I, I prefer both burst mode because simply I can anticipate something that's gonna happen in the sport and cap, capture seven frames per second or six frames per second or eight frames per second, whatever your camera is capable of doing. And, and you can capture all those frames and get a better chance of getting just that one that's, that is just right. Lens considerations. Um, you, an, an autofocus image stabilization lens is uh, a, a great way to, to capture the action. Uh, if you can get image stabilization and autofocus on your lens, you're gonna be better off than if you just have the autofocus without the image stabilization. Uh, clearly, most of the DSLRs in the 21st century have autofocus, and so um, you're going to want to go with you're going to want to go with that kind of a lens. Now, do you want to go with a long telephoto or a not so long telephoto? Um, that is also that's going to depend on what you're doing. Uh, in in the gym, sometimes the, the I have a, a, the the 7300. Sometimes that 70 is crowding in a little bit. I can't quite get the breadth of the shot that I want. 
Uh, another lens I have is I have a, uh, it's a, an EF. This is a 28-135. And now in, the, in a gym, it's only 90 feet long on a crop sensor. Um, that gives me a, a pretty good uh, range of wide angle to, to telephoto. But um, if they're on the far end of the court, I'm not gonna be able to zoom in as much as with the longer telephoto. If you have lens options, you're gonna have to just try them out until you see what you, what you really prefer and how, how you like to shoot it. Uh, for outdoor sports, soccer, football, where the field is, 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 is really big, a longer lens is gonna give you more options uh, in that situation. So that's your lens considerations, some type of image stabilization autofocus. Uh, the telephoto capacity is gonna depend on the situation. And then as far as setting your camera up, you wanna prioritize shutter speed so that you can freeze that motion. That is your quick start guide to sports photography. Um, please, if, if you enjoyed this, please like the, the video, subscribe to the channel, sign up for notifications. Um, dig down inside my, my uh, playlist on photography and videography. There are other sports specific uh, videos where uh, I go into a little bit more detail on, on what you might be looking for in a particular sport such as basketball or volleyball or cross country or swimming and those kinds of things. So check those things out as well. That's it for this episode. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next episode.